Liliana Ulloa here with Eggies Cavaliascas, oh, well. better known as... Oh, you, you spell it good. <laughs> <laughs> I practiced. Better known as Mean Machine, of course. Mean Machine, you do have a pretty tremendous upcoming fight with rising star Virgil Ortiz yes. Jr., August 14th. Tell us about how you got offered the fight. Did you immediately was like, yes, I want this fight? How did you react to getting offered this fight? Oh yeah, when, I, when my manager called me and he said like Virgil Ortiz is the possibility to for our next fight, so I was very happy. Yeah, it's fighting for gold, for gold guy the, from Golden Boy and fighting on the zone. It's it's a big deal for me. So yeah, I, I was very happy and I know Virgil Ortiz is a rising star. He's a tough opponent. He's, it's gonna be a good fight. So that's for me. It's what I need. Now Virgil Ortiz has a tremendous knockout. Power. He does have a streak, a knockout streak, perfect since turning pro. But it's the first time he faces someone like you who also is known for having really nice power. Are you not only looking to give him the first loss, but to also maybe knock him out in the process? Oh yeah, I think uh, this fight is not gonna go 12 rounds. We, we're gonna we're gonna go for a knockout. He's gonna go for a knockout. I'm gonna go for a knockout. So it's gonna be it's gonna be explosive fight. Now this fight is in Texas, which is his home state. Does that put a little bit more pressure on you to perform better, given that it is his hometown and you're out of your territory? Uh, no, it's it's no pressure for me because all my boxing career are fighting not in my territory. Like United States, I'm from Europe, so like all my fights was going in the United States. So yeah, I'm always in enemy's territory. So for me, it's the, nothing special. Now... When he fought Maurice Hooker, a lot of people said that he got hit a little too much. Others say that maybe he just didn't respect Hooker's power. What do you think about his performance against against Maurice Hooker? And did you see any flaws that you'd like to capitalize on? Yeah, I think uh, maybe he didn't respect the power of Maurice Hooker. He's not a big puncher. Yeah, he, Virgil just got hit maybe more than he should. But yeah, this is boxing. Like boxers get hit in the fight, so it's not a big deal. He got the win. That's it. Now, because of the pandemic, you were only able to fight once in 2020, though you got a tremendous eight-round victory. Um, do you feel like the inactivity might bother you some, or are you trying to train extra hard so that there's no inact ring rust come fight night? Mm, yeah, like, no, there's, like, just one fight, like, last year in September, but I always stay in the gym. I always fighting these guys in the gym and like spar sparring sometimes is even more than a fighting so yeah I'm always active. Speaking of sparring I see you sparring May Reem who contends at 160 correct? Yeah I'm sparring guys. <laughs> so do you spar bigger guys to kind of get you prepared for Virgil Ortiz? Oh uh, yeah. You just always do that. I maybe like to spar sometimes the bigger guys because that's why I can I can punch them harder than like guys 147 so my weight class so yeah like for, for me they push me push me harder to perform m much better in the sparring so for me it's good now with Virgil Ortiz Jr. when he finished his fight with Maurice Hooker he called out Bud Crawford but Bud Crawford said you gotta get through Mean Machine first do you take that as a compliment that he kind of put you as kind of like the test the gatekeeper to get through you in order to get through him it's always good when like guys like Terence Crawford mention my name and when the boxers mention my name, it's good for me, it's more publicity, yeah. It's it's nice to hear that, so yeah, it's good. Now, having uh, fought Crawford yourself, do you feel like Virgil maybe is too soon for him? And are you going to teach him that he does have to take a little bit slower once he faces you? Well, I don't think about uh, ab about those things. Like we have a, we have a fight coming up. I, I'm not looking at Crawford right now. Like we, I think Virgil Ortiz is focusing on me. I'm focusing on him. So it's just two guys in the ring and one guy gonna get the win. Do you think you're gonna have greater advantages against him because of the opposition that you fought? Because you have fought the Crawfords of you know the division. Do you feel like that gives you an advantage? No, I don't, I don't, I'm not focusing on that because Terence Crawford and Virgil Tis are two different style of fighters. And Virgil Tis is like, I, I already mentioned, like he's old school Mexican fighter. And this like this is the fight I think Fang wants to, wants to see, like the style. So I'm, that, that's not in my head that like fighting against Crawford will give me any kind of advantage. Now, in your last fight, the judges had you down on, on the scorecards, but you came back with a tremendous eight-round knockout. Do you think you're going to try to get 
Virg Ortiz out of there sooner than that since he, ha since he hasn't been past like the eighth round, I believe. Oh, I'm not focusing on the what round I will try to take him out, but but how I mentioned already, like we we're gonna we're gonna go for a knockout. Now he's obviously sparring great opposition as well at the Robert Garcia gym. What do you see as his biggest flaw uh, coming into a fight with you? Flaw is like like uh, something that he does not do as well, maybe that you feel like I can I can do better than him on this. Uh, well, I, I'm not going to answer this question. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to give us your secrets. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so also, you know, when you had your, your knockout victory in the bubble, how was it different to not have the fans there? And are you excited to have the fans now? Because in Texas, the people show up. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> I, I hear Texas, lots of people. So the, I'm excited that fans going to be there finally. And like fighting in the bubble... It, like I'm not all, I'm not focused on the fans when I'm in the arena. I'm focused on the fighting and the guy in front of me. But it was a little bit tricky when I started hearing them like, first round some like audience there, mm -hmm. but it was like to the stereo and like they, <laughs> people was cheering and I was start looking around like during the fight, I started looking around who's cheering there, but they just meant on the stereo. So it it's was like the laughing on TV shows. Yeah, it's, it's, it's it, yeah, yeah. It's, it, I didn't like that, but yeah, but fan, fan, fans give, give some some boost when you fight it but in texas i will not get gonna get that boost <laughs> do you think the fans you know obviously i went to virgil's last fight a lot of his fans showed up you said that you know you're not really focused on the fans but are you used to having maybe people boo at you when you come into the arena because i think this time you might get that oh yes I, i'm i'm used to people booing me and they've been doing me like lots of lots of times lots of, like even like from professional to from amateurs like yeah people People maybe don't like me, but they still watch my fights. Now, you do have a very fan-friendly style. Should you get through, I know you're focused on Virgil Ortiz, but when you got your victory in the bubble, you said that you did like, you would like a rematch with Crawford. Which, is that still a goal for you? Uh, yeah, I can say that, like, not maybe not the goal, but yeah, I would like to get the rematch. I think after... This fight with Virgil Ortiz, I need to get the rematch, but there's a still guys, guys, other champions like Pacquiao fighting Spence. I mentioned your Dennis Ugas is there. He's a he's a WBA champion. So yeah, there's there's a guys, different champions, not just Crawford. Now there is rumors flying around that you know there's rumors all over the internet, but that uh, Crawford's fighting Avanasian, who someone that you already fought and defeated, having fought both of them, who would you give the you know the advantage to? I didn't didn't hear that fight. I was thinking Crawford gonna fight Porter. Yeah, but that's the that's the mandatory. Yeah. Yeah, but I would like to see Crawford Porter fight. But if you're gonna choose Avanasian, well, <laughs> Avanasian is a good good fighter. Yeah, he. He showed that in the ring, but yeah, for for Crawford, I'm not, I'm not thinking it's gonna be a big trouble. Now you are now a free agent. Are you excited? Maybe that that's gonna maybe help you get those fights with the guys at you know the PBC stable, maybe on the other side of the street. Oh uh, yes, I, I'm I'm excited that right now like offer from Golden Boy and there's other agencies, so I'm very excited to be free agent and get those opportunities, get those big fights. Now, give us your prediction for Pacquiao versus Spence. This is a great fight. Uh, it's a week after yours. I know you're focused on the Virgil Ortiz fight, but as a fan of boxing and looking at your division, how does that fight play out for you? People right now, past couple of days, been asking me a lot of this <laughs> question. <laughs> I think, like, yeah, I think it's 50-50 fight. Like, like I, I think so. It's 50-50. I would like to Pacquiao get the win because he's a legend, but same time I'm thinking Spence is gonna be just too much for Pacquiao. Too smart, too big, too skillful. You think Pacquiao's age might also play a factor? I think, yeah. Now, think so. for your fight, you're not old, I'm not calling you old, but you know, Virgil is the young guy and this is yeah. more of a like young guy versus someone that's a little bit more experienced in, in uh, you know, with opponents. Do you feel like that might play a factor with your fight? I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not that old. My my, my body is like 20-year-old kid. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. No, I saw that sparring. You're definitely dangerous. 
Yeah. Okay, now also, you mentioned Porter versus Crawford. Who would you give that uh, advantage on that one? I think Crawford would win that fight, but Porter will give him lots of troubles, lots of lots of troubles. But but Crawford is a, he's a great champion. He will, he would manage to to get the win, but it will be a very close fight. No, see, I've said this on Twitter. I've said this everywhere. I felt like you knocked down Crawford, like he wasn't hurt and staggered, but it was a flash knockdown. Do you feel like you did drop him? Because it, it didn't look like a slip to me. Thank you. Yeah, I dropped him. Yeah, he 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 was down, and he knows that. I knows that, and most of the people knows that. Yeah. Does that kind of make you like? See, um, I'm kind of here in the division, and I'm someone to, you know, to be on the lookout for. No, it's nice, Leah. Like even like the referee didn't count an out. It's nice to drop the champion, but at the end of the day, I lost the fight. So it's it's up to me. Like I lost the fight. It's that's it. Like. I lost it. Now, lastly, with Virgil Ortiz Jr., you said there's going to be a toe-to-toe -to -toe fight. You guys, one of you guys, is going to get stopped. What do you think are going to be your bigger strengths so that you're not the one getting knocked out? I think power, movement, thinking in the ring. Yeah. All right, let the fans know my mission, where they can follow you so that way they can keep up with your, your Instagram and then obviously to watch the fight on August 14th on The Zone. Instagram, Mean Machine 147. All right, thank you so much, Mean Machine, a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you so much.